Multiple chances for winter weather over the coming days for millions of Americans, but my eyes are on a bigger pattern change by the middle of the month that could return winter much further south. Welcome in, folks. Happy, uh, I believe it is Sunday, right? It is January 4th and uh, continuing to track what I think will uh, be a very interesting middle of the month as I'm eyeing this pattern change. But before we ever even get there, uh, we do have multiple shots of winter weather on the way for a lot of folks here over the coming days. We're going to break all of it down for you in today's video. Now, if you're new to the channel, though, welcome. My name is Gerald. I'm a meteorologist at WCCB Charlotte. If you haven't already, go ahead and like the video, subscribe, and hit the bell for the latest notifications. Doing all that's free. It doesn't cost you a penny. All it does is help me continue to run this channel for free and uh, it helps to allow these videos to get into the algorithm more so other folks can view them and get in on the useful knowledge. All right, let's go ahead and jump right on into it today and waste no time. Next to me is the latest afternoon run of our GFS ensembles, and it shows that uh, potential over the next couple of days. Notice how we get stripes of snow through the Midwest, the Northeast, then another stripe in about uh, five days or so. And then at the end, notice how more areas into the east start to flare up. That's due to that pattern change uh, that we've been talking about for a couple of days now that uh, is looking more and more likely by the day that it'll happen here right around the middle of January. Before we talk about the long range, though, I do want to dive into those little pieces of energy that are going to bring some snow and ice over the next couple of days. We can already see it getting going on our upper level water vapor loop. Check out this little spin of low pressure over the Dakotas right now. Classic kind of clipper train on going right now, right through the northern tier of the country. The Dakotas, Minnesota, out towards Wisconsin, eventually Michigan and into the northeast. Going to get in on this action. You can already see, again, there's one piece there. If you look back out, starting to work into the PNW is another piece of energy here just off screen. Uh, that one going to be the second round of energy that helps to potentially bring some of this active weather to parts of the country. You can also see it on radar. We've got uh, a bit of a messy day into much of Minnesota uh, from uh, Minneapolis northbound, the blue being snow, that uh, purple being sleet, and some of that pink being freezing rain. So Unfortunately, it's not just an all snow event uh, with these two clippers on the way. We are going to get some ice out of it as well, even some lake effect ongoing right now up into upstate New York, where you have just gotten pummeled into the Tug Hill over the past week. Uh, cannot catch a break from the lake effect up that way. And then out west, here comes round two. See this little classic little comma head uh, right here? Yeah, that's the next system that's going to work on it and also bring some snow and ice. Let's go ahead and time it out on some of our latest mesoscale models. All right, let's go ahead and time out uh, these uh, next couple of systems using the RGEM model. I think it's doing a pretty good job, and uh, it goes out far enough that we can see both the storms, so that's another reason I picked this one today, but I do think uh, it is uh, doing a relatively good job of handling this. All right, so here comes the first one, working on through Minnesota and Wisconsin, northern Wisconsin, the upper peninsula of Michigan, going to get a nice burst of snow this evening and into the overnight, going to start to wind down back into the Twin Cities the later we go on into tonight. You keep it going, I even think by the time we get very, uh, we can call it late tonight or early tomorrow morning, this is about 2 a.m. Eastern time, uh, so 1 a.m. here Central time. We've got some snow, even potentially as far south as Detroit. Heavier snow up into the northern mitten of Michigan throughout to the overnight. But notice, this is a pretty quick hitting system. It's not going to last forever. It's going to kind of be in and out of here. Then gets to the northeast by tomorrow. I'll pause it uh, right around here tomorrow morning, getting into upstate New York. Could even see some snow flying into central PA. And this one, because it's a clipper, it's got a little bit more staying power. So I think this one does cross the Appalachian chain. We're going to likely get some snow into Massachusetts out of this, uh, into Vermont, New Hampshire, and even some of our other mesoscale model data is more uh, aggressive with this burst of snow tomorrow afternoon and evening here pictured uh, before eventually going back out into the Atlantic. So yeah, Boston, I think you're going to get something out of this as well. Then comes the next system. Let's back it up so you can watch that one unfold. Notice the L showing up, and here we go. This is right around midnight Monday going into Tuesday. That pink, yeah, that's ice. We need to watch for ice out of this system through uh, portions of southern Minnesota into Wisconsin as uh, we are getting a big warm-up for a lot of folks down south. You're going to notice the warmer air this week. You're wondering what snow I'm talking about, uh, but that warmer air... Also going to transport northbound, at least in the mid-levels. Not so much at the surface. That's why you're still getting frozen precipitation, but uh, not all snow. So a bit of a wintry mix, a mess here. Uh, very early Tuesday morning through Wisconsin, getting into Michigan. I think mostly rain for Indiana, Ohio southbound. Uh, and then in the northeast, also going to be a fine line between ice, rain, and snow. Right now, this looks to be an okay bet. This would be the evening of Tuesday going into Wednesday. 
Blue is snow. The pink is a wintry mix with some ice, and then green is rain. I think I-95 corridor, mostly rain out of this one as that warm air surges north, but definitely a wintry mix into the interior of the northeast with some of that snow and ice before that system, too, pulls away as it strengthens and works right on up into Nova Scotia here by Wednesday afternoon. And then guess what? That sets the stage for the next system to cross from the Rockies. But before we talk about that one, let's go ahead and talk about potential snow and ice totals out of these two systems. All right, we'll start in the Midwest where we are going to definitely see some snow out of these uh, next couple of storms. And honestly, it's going to be more of the rich gets richer out here than anything else. I think the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, the Northern Mitten, going to cash in more than anybody else where we could see more than half a foot of snow uh, sprinkled in here. I'll add, this is the blend of models, so normally it's uh, a little bit more on the conservative side, I'll say, so some of you could definitely bump up these totals, but I think it's doing a relatively good job at showing the line between snow and rain. Uh, kind of works right through the Detroit area, uh, but nonetheless could still get some flakes that far south, but you see that the highest totals out of both of these systems going to be uh, locked up into the northern mitten and into the upper peninsula, and even right along the Wisconsin border, they're going to get some snow out of these uh, storms. Then ice, this is where I really think uh, the blend is a little conservative, but I'll show it to you for location purposes. This will be more of the second system than the first one, but uh, notice could definitely get some icing up here into northern Wisconsin, uh, up into the upper peninsula of Michigan. Another thing to note, further south, Chicago, down through Indiana, Ohio, and uh, kind of south of this black line, you don't see much ice or snow. I do think this will be more of a rain event for both of those areas, especially with the second system that tries to work on in here uh, in just a couple of days. You shifted to the northeast, also going to see some snow here. The blend of models uh, showing the heaviest totals back into New York State, where uh, two to four inches is possible in those darker blues, and then even back here into portions of uh, Canada, going to get some good snow. But I do think this first one will bring snow even further south and east. Check it out. Much of Massachusetts, including Boston, likely to get at least a little bit of snowfall. Uh, not enough to shut the city down or anything, but will nonetheless fall from the sky likely uh, with that first clipper, the one that uh, is working on through uh, portions of Minnesota right now. In terms of ice here, again, the blend very conservative, but I do think we will get some ice. I'd definitely say higher than this, uh, but location-wise, probably doing a pretty good job of showing the highest potential, and that would be more with the second system than the first one in terms of any icing concerns. All right, that's the next two storms to talk about. Then uh, it's the big warm-up to talk about and how that warm-up combined with this changing pattern back to the cold side is likely to produce a pretty big storm this coming week. And then we'll touch on what could happen around the middle of the month where I do think more folks could get in on uh, snow potential at least uh, further east and south. So let's go ahead and talk about it. All right, well, I know we just talked about snow, but really, we've got a big ridge on the way for many of us. You can see all of these orange and red colors. That indicates a buckling of the jet stream uh, back to the north, and that's going to really warm us up. It is going to be quite a toasty January week for many folks into the southeast, the mid-south, and uh, really just a good portion of the country. You'll see it here in a second with the temperature anomalies. However, it's not going to last forever, and right here is where we start to set the stage for, one, the pattern change, and two, a big storm it's likely to produce. This is a classic look for a strong mid-latitude cyclone. You've got a big buckle up in the jet stream into the east, providing warm air and moisture, and you've got a big dip into the Rockies, providing spin and lift. And anytime you put all those ingredients together, which is going to be right here over the heart of the country, yeah, that's a classic recipe for a big storm to get going that could bring two different threats, potentially severe weather and yes, yeah, snow and uh, maybe even ice on the other side of it. And that's kind of the setup that we're seeing here into the mid-levels of the atmosphere. To go back to the temperature side of it, I do think, like I said, it is going to be mighty toasty. Check it out. This is by tomorrow afternoon from Monday. Outside of the Northeast, basically everywhere else in the country is running above average temperatures, and that holds. Check the reds here, the pinks showing up. Here we go by uh, Thursday afternoon. I mean, this is you know 20 plus degrees above average for some folks. Could be dealing with record-breaking heat. And look at it, spiking all the way up into the Arctic, this warm air. Uh, so we are going to likely lose some snowpack out of this as a holds on, but then eyeing a bit of a change up, as I mentioned, later on down the road. We'll talk about that more here in just a moment, but first, I do want to show you this uh, next storm potential and uh, how it could unfold. Uh, like I said, you've got the ingredients all coming together for a pretty strong mid-latitude cyclone. 
Let's give you a little sneak peek of what it could look like. Here you go. This is for your Thursday morning. You've got to that big trough working over the Rockies. And anytime that happens and uh, you get to that cyclonic vorticity advection over uh, or down sloping terrains here, oftentimes that's going to be a pretty good recipe to get a Colorado low to form. And sure enough, here we go. It starts to develop, at least on the latest run of the European here. And this is brand new, just came out. Um, getting that going down over Colorado. So like I said, could be a bit of a, a double-edged sword here in terms of threats, and it could be multiple areas of low pressure. You see here by overnight Thursday and a Friday, one uh, shoots off towards Chicago, then another one tries to develop. On the northern side of these, we're likely going to get some snow from Denver back up into maybe Nebraska, the Plains, heck, I even think down into New Mexico. Further south, it's too soon for specifics, but we will need to watch for a bit of a severe weather threat. Uh, into the Mid-South. Uh, nothing I'm overly concerned about right now, but definitely something uh, to keep an eye on. And you can see the train keeps coming. And look at this one. This storm really starts to crank up. This is by Saturday morning of this coming week. And uh, you almost get uh, blizzard-like conditions on the back side of it, according to the European. In terms of highest snowfall chances out of this one, who has the highest chance? Well, like I said, it's going to be a swath here from uh, the Rockies through Colorado, uh, right up into Nebraska, potentially Iowa, the Twin Cities, back into Wisconsin, into the the upper peninsula of Michigan, and then I think up into Canada. If that storm isn't uh, getting you very excited, though, let's talk about what happens behind it, where I think the pattern will finally switch up and things get a little bit more interesting for folks further into the east and potentially further south as well. All right, let's pick up where we left off on the uh, last map, and here we go. This is by Thursday and Friday of this coming week. Like I said, a big trough back uh, into the Rockies and a big ridge spiking into the eastern United States, and that combination likely to fuel the storms I just showed you. Then, though, that trough is likely to push all the way into the eastern United States, and right here is where things start to get more interesting. This is right around the 15th or so of the month, right around the middle of the month, uh, a little bit more than 10 or so days from now. And this has been a pretty common theme for a while now in the models. They finally have locked in onto this time period where the ridge shifts back out west. You get a spiking ridge back up into uh, western Canada. You've even got a little bit of a block up here into Greenland and a trough working down into the eastern United States. Why is that important? Well, one, this should allow at least cooler air back into the eastern U.S. It doesn't look like an Arctic outbreak or anything like that right now. However... The good news is you only really need average air whenever you're in the middle part of January to get winter weather. We don't need uh, the entire North Pole to drop on us, uh, to say the least. But more importantly, I think this is going to get a much more favorable storm track where storms could start to form along the southeast coastline and right up the eastern seaboard is what you would likely get with a look like this if the pieces come together as the models are projecting right now. And uh, obviously that's a pretty big if. Now, what exactly could this look like? Uh, if we do get a system like this, well, actually, before we do that, let me show you this. Let me show you the temperature part of this, and then I'll show you what this could look like um, with a setup like that on the map. Now, in terms of temperature anomalies, we know it's going to be very warm this week for many of us. You can see that here on the European ensembles. And then we get a shot of some cooler air behind that storm system that happens this upcoming weekend. Uh, notice by the start of the next week, the 12th, 13th, we've got some cooler air uh, working on into portions of the southeast. And right into here, notice what begins to happen. It might not be very cold, but it's at least closer to average. And that's uh, a good sign uh, out here into the eastern United United States as you get that trough to drop down it looks uh, you know to be anywhere in between and there is a bit of a spread at this point in the ensembles uh, you've got some that say it's going to be well above average some that say it's going to be well below average and that comes out to about average right now so we'll see which way it ends up going but either way um, higher likelihood that the torch I just showed you starts to crumble a little bit to say the least now what about the storm track with the cold air or at least more average air compared to the very warm air that we're going to see this week? Yeah, the storm track looks pretty good. Let me show you the latest European run and just give you a general idea of what a pattern like this could produce. All right, uh, anytime I show models like this, I always have to add a disclaimer here at the beginning. One, this is not a forecast. Two, we're just going over data. Uh, and three, this will change. And uh, four, the main reason I'm showing it to you is just to give you, like I said, context of the general idea or types of storms this pattern can produce, not looking at any sort of specifics right now. All right, with that said, let's pick up here this next weekend. Like I said, uh, we already showed you this system. Uh, a storm kind of cranking up into the plains and up into the Midwest could produce one severe weather and two maybe even blizzard-like conditions on the backside. 
Then that brings a trough in and that means cooler air. And check it out right here. This is what I was talking about. Whenever you get a big trough like this one, see all these blue lines uh, dipping down like this? That's that dip in the jet stream. That creates a lot of lift and a lot of bear clinic instability along the eastern seaboard. Basically, that just means lift over an area that already wants to spin at the surface. And that makes getting coastal storms much easier in the afternoon run of the European. Right around 10 days from now, the 15th, like I've been mentioning, does get a coastal low to form here off the southeast with this trough and then turns it into a big nor'easter and uh, a big snowstorm for some. But obviously, you know, plenty uh, to figure out with the pattern from there. But that's what I'm watching and the potential that a pattern like this could produce. Now, in terms of probabilities, what are the odds that something like this actually happens? Well, one, being so far away, it's going to be pretty limited. I already showed you the temperatures. We have widespread uh, in the ensemble members, but we'll take a look and check it out. There is definitely a bit of a signal here showing up for some sort of coastal-like storm. You see snow chances start to return from uh, the southern apps all the way up into the northeast and back out into the Great Lakes, kind of that area. But even then, the numbers are pretty small right now in terms of probability. So um, a long way to go here in terms of figuring things out and exactly what's going to happen with this pattern. But I am still confident right around the middle of the month, we get a switch up with at least the potential for something more wintry. Now, if that produces a snowstorm or not, we'll see. Obviously, plenty of time to go. Uh, but that's, uh, that's a summary of what I'm tracking here in the weather. All right, folks, so that's all I've got for you in today's video. Hopefully you enjoyed it again. If you did, like it and uh, maybe share it with a family member or friend that you think might also enjoy these videos. Um, with that said, I'll catch y'all on WCCB Charlotte tonight at 6 and 10 and then ABC Columbia at 11. And uh, if you don't see me there, then well, I'll see you next time right here on YouTube.